When you look at a news broadcast, what you may see as a professional news story really took days, weeks, and even months to prepare for. During this process, news anchors have struggles behind the camera. There are many adaptations that they have to learn to overcome. I talked to a few professionals about their experiences. Welcome, we're at four o'clock right Holly Thompson is one of the leading news anchors for WSMV Channel 4 News. She has been with WSMV for 20 years. Thompson shares her journey to becoming the successful news anchor she is today. So I'm Holly Thompson and I went to MTSU and I went under the umbrella of mass communications with uh, radio TV photography and an emphasis in broadcast journalism. So I have been in television uh, for many years. I just celebrated my 20th year at WSMV, so News 4. And I started in television as a MMJ or one woman band doing everything. And I was the weekend weather anchor, moved my way up producing and, as well as anchoring and then crossed over to all news. And now I have been in Nashville doing news as a reporter and now as an anchor. Christine Eschenfelder is an assistant professor in the School of Journalism at Middle Tennessee State University. She has had many years of experience in the television industry, such as a news reporter, anchor, and assignment manager. Dr. Eschenfelder describes how she got from working in the television industry to an assistant professor. Uh, actually, my undergraduate degree is in sociology, and my minor was in journalism, which is an interesting path, but I always wanted to be a journalist. Um, I enjoyed writing. I enjoyed talking to people, um, liked working with video and with audio, so I really enjoyed that. After college, I had a series of jobs, kind of working my way up in the industry. I ran the teleprompter at a TV station. Um, I was an associate producer, so I did a lot of copywriting. Eventually, I worked up uh, to the Jacksonville, Florida market. I really enjoyed working there as an associate producer. So through the years, I've been a producer, an associate producer, a teleprompter operator, sometimes I was called a production assistant, I uh, became a reporter, an anchor, I did some field producing and some long format producing. Chris Clark was the nightly news anchor for Channel 5 News for 41 years. He is currently an adjunct professor in the Department of the School of Journalism at MTSU. Clark explains the types of adaptations that news anchors have to overcome. A news anchor should ideally be the best reporter in the shop because in this day and age with live reporting everywhere, you've got to be a, a, a generalist. You have to know a little bit about a lot of things and be a quick study when the time comes on breaking news to ask the right questions. So it takes a, a keen eye in, the, in a reporter's sense to get it all right. Uh, so you have to be a good reporter, a good communicator. You'll have to know how to write in a conversational style. You'll have to talk in a conversational style to be understood. And it all comes together in great ad-libbing and listening to what people are telling you so you can get your next question from that. That's a very uh, important thing as well. Sarah Wiley Helton is a Blackman alumni and a junior at MTSU with a major in multimedia journalism and minoring in organizational communications. Helton shares what encourages her about her opportunities as a future broadcaster. Um, MT10, if you get involved with that, there's a lot of connections you can make with that. And even being a multimedia journalist, sorry, I forgot the name of my major, even being a multimedia journalism major, you're set with a lot of different skills, whether it's writing, reporting, editing, shooting, like you do all of it. Um, and a lot of jobs these days are looking for multimedia journalists instead of only anchors or only editors. And so it's important to be able to do it all because you have more opportunities to get into the business. Garrett Walker is a senior at MTSU, majoring in multimedia communications. Walker talks about what encourages him about going into the broadcasting field. I think that a multimedia journalism, that's what I'm majoring in, um, has a lot of different things that they can do. They can edit, they can write, they can shoot, um, and that's really valuable nowadays. I think any personality, any anybody that's important nowadays they have to do all of that themselves and that's kind of what you have to do as a multimedia journalist um, and so that's really encouraging that you have all these skills
There are many specific struggles that news anchors deal with. It is not necessarily knowing the material. It might be as simple as carrying heavy equipment or as complicated as raising a family. When I first started in television, I accepted an MMJ job, which is basically one man band, one woman band. And it's that much harder for a female just because there's so much that you're having to do that involves, I mean, almost weightlifting it seems because you're carrying a 30, 35 pound camera, you've got your tripod, you've got your, at that time, this huge battery belt pack that weighs so much, then you're carrying your brief bag and everything else. So it's just that much more of a challenge for a female. Uh, period. So I felt like I was at the gym almost every day just trying to, you know, work up my muscles so I could do the weight itself. It was a challenge. Going to be in the broadcast news business, you better be set for irregular hours. You better be set with having to ignore your family more than the average person is going to have to ignore them because you've got to run when the news breaks. Uh, that just comes with the job. Luckily, I was married to a wonderful woman before she passed away who understood and raised our kids while I was trying to make a name for myself in the business. And uh, that's a very, very difficult thing to do, but she did it just fine. Well, you know, um, television news, the schedule is very irregular. We have odd hours, we have long hours. Um, you know, we don't stop for Christmas. We don't stop because it's Saturday night. The news is, is always happening. And in the, in the news industry, you know you're just gonna have a long schedule. Even as an anchor to this day, the hours are challenging. Now that's challenging on both sides, but as a mother, especially after I had my first child and stayed at home, I took the maternity leave for three months and went back to work, but I'm not able to see my kids, you know, in the morning at all. I don't ever see them. So we have to make the time that we have really matter, really count and be very intentional. So I call them, they call me, always after the morning show on their way into work. So we're able to, you know, catch up there. But I miss all that, you know, time to rise and shine, let's get going, making the breakfast, getting them out the door, taking them to school, whatever the case. I miss all that. But that's the hardest thing is on the family life. You give up a lot of that because of the irregular hours. You're gonna work weekends, you're gonna work nights, you're gonna work holidays. Just get used to it. If you don't like it, don't get into the business. And as I started to have a family and I had children, it was harder for me because, you know, you get off at 11 o'clock, 11.30 at night, and you have to have childcare at those hours, and it's really expensive. Usually it's private childcare. Chris Clark talks about the differences in the struggles of news anchors from when he first started in the business to current news anchors. When I started doing the news full-time in 1961, the, it was a lot easier because television was really new then, and we were sort of inventing it as we went along. And I was lucky to work at a very small station where I made a lot of mistakes, but nobody knew I was making mistakes because it was sort of a, a new thing to do. I think uh, it's harder now than it was when I came along. But uh, I've, I've had several students who've gone to places like Jackson, Tennessee, and Bowling Green, and they are getting wonderful experience. And a lot of them have moved on to bigger stations. So it does work that way. You just have to have patience and work at it. Well, when I started in 1961, it was much tougher for women and people of color and people who had funny last names. All of that's gone now. It's a plus to be a woman. It's a plus to be a person of color. It's a plus to have a funny sounding last name because you get certain audience groups you wouldn't have otherwise. So all that was negative when I started is, is now a plus. And I think the playing field is very equal now. Do women still have a lot more trouble? Yeah, they do. Uh, to be taken seriously. I, I think what we've seen in Fox News is just the tip of the iceberg among the bigger stations. But I can tell you, the local stations I've worked at, there's a great deal of respect for everyone there. And I think it's a little bit easier there. The big leagues, I suspect, it's a little bit more difficult and a little more male chauvinist oriented, quite frankly. Holly Thompson shares why she thinks many of her co-anchors have come and gone over the years. So first, let's hit on Nashville. Nashville itself, I feel like, is a destination market for a lot of people because there's so much to offer here. We're market, I think, at this point, 28. So we're considered a large market. We're not a top 10, but we are still a large city, but it still has a hometown feel. The people here are wonderful, um, and, and I love it here. I grew up in Tennessee, and so, you know, they say never say never, but it would take a whole lot to get me to leave. So a lot of people, once they're here, 
they don't want to leave. And you have a lot of women who establish themselves here and have all their family here, and this is it. This is really where we want to be. And for a lot of the men who come in, they may more easily see themselves, you know, rising to a larger city. So for them, Nashville is not necessarily the destination where they want to stay, where they want to stop. And so over my 20 years, I've had several, you know, at least five different co-anchors who have continually to moved up the you know, market. They've either gotten out of the industry. Many of them, though, have gone forward and gone to a bigger market. Um, my last co-anchor, Ian Wright, is now in Tampa. So, and he's with the morning show there, doing the same thing, but just in a bigger city. So Nashville is a little bit different than a lot of the large cities because so many people want to stay here, at least as far as the women go. So I'm not really sure what the numbers are as far as graduates in male graduates in radio TV or an emphasis in broadcast journalism. I don't really know what those numbers are, but I do know that when it has come time for my managers to look for a counterpart for me, it is hard to find really good qualified men in this industry who are ready to be in this size. So I, from what I'm hearing, the pool has uh, become that much smaller as far as for men. I think there may be a lot more women who are in, interested either in broadcasting, and it may be that men are interested too, but maybe not so keen on the fact that they may have to start with um, you know, a lower salary to get established in the market before they can finally make it to a bigger market to make maybe the money that they're looking for. By doing this project, I was hoping to bring to people's attention the so-called myths about the struggles news anchors face. Going into this project, I had the thought that women had more barriers than men do. I came to find out that men and women have an equal amount of barriers that they have to overcome. Cheyenne Avila, BSPN.